Well, what I'm going to tell you today is about a different uh, word, the word you have heard about, a uh, word of small home objects, uh, which has always been my sphere, and uh, the sphere of the company that I manage. Let me just start with the family, because we are still a family business with all the pros and cons uh, this brings about. Here you see my father, the uncle, the brothers, the cousins, all the people I have, have been working and reckoning with. This is at the Valley on Lake, about 100 kilometers north of Milan. In this valley, about 300 years ago, we have started producing wooden and metal object, uh, a home object and cooking items. Here you see some images of this traditional valley. It's still very traditional today. Uh, these are um, typical products from the valley, uh, were also wooden statues of uh, Pinocchio are being produced uh, despite uh, Chinese uh, cheap copies and then the two grandfathers uh, who would both come from uh, this tradition of the valley. This is uh, the father of my mother, Alfonso Bialetti, who first uh, designed uh, this coffee machine, a very popular one. And the other grandfather, the Alessi grandfather, who set up the company in 1981. He, he looks um, 21, 1921. Here you see other pictures, uh, the objects uh, that uh, I have been designing. Uh, when we talk about uh, design, uh, well, uh, Carlo, uh, my father, has designed uh, most of Alessi objects in the 30s. Uh, here you see my father, who looks very proud uh, of uh, his last project for Alessi. It's a tea and coffee set uh, Bombay. It's uh, still being produced uh, today. And then in the 50s, my father, according to the tradition uh, of uh, the small factories producing design in Italy, has invited uh, foreign architects and designers uh, to cooperate with him. These are among the first uh, objects uh, developed in the 50s. That's me. It's a highly symbolic picture. My destiny was to work uh, within the company, within this teapot. Uh, uh, well, at least in the 70s, when we were actually designing homeware, uh, uh, we were perceived as capitalists. Uh, I have thought of being provocative and innovative to see whether I could change uh, the situation and uh, make uh, my business, my sector funnier. So uh, we have a laissez d'après. This was a first project. Uh, the idea was to use uh, the machines in our factory not so much to produce boring trays, uh, tea sets, or coffee sets, uh, but uh, rather to create a real works of art. Not so much conceived by designers or architects, but rather created by artists. So the only difference being that they would be produced uh, using industrial molds and machines in uh, uh, mass with with a mass production, and not. In a limit, not as limited editions, so the idea of the, the art for everybody. They were being sold at a market pre, uh, price in, in 71. Within a few months, um, we have clarified that this object would be a major flop, my first uh, flop. Uh, 
people were not keen on buying these objects. So my father has stopped me, has not encouraged me in um, having a very large collection of these useless items. Uh, so I couldn't start producing uh, Salvador Dali's uh, copies. Uh, he had uh, designed uh, this object, uh, Orger Nettil. Uh, it was a vase about a negative typology. Here you see, it's a sort of replica of it. Here you see. This is a replica of Dali, the art multiples. Here you see it's gold plated. And there were hooks uh, which were being used uh, to go fishing for salmons, uh, so it was quite a dangerous object. Uh, here you see Salvador Dali was explaining to me, I was very young, how important these hooks, uh, these fishing hooks uh, were. I couldn't uh, launch the mass production of this object. Uh, my father has uh, stopped me, but uh, I have nevertheless managed to buy 50,000 such uh, fishing hooks uh, from uh, a specialist in Oslo. We have still got these fishing hooks in the warehouse. I have been working with various authors, uh, but nobody could recycle uh, these 50,000 fishing hooks. At a certain point in time, I was really amused, uh, but the older managers of Alessi were a bit upset. They were concerned. Uh, my uncle Ettore was really concerned. Um, he has always been a very strict person. Uh, in the 70s, uh, I was very lucky. I had the opportunity of starting to work with the great masters of Italian design. First, Ettore Sozzas. Here you see, and then Richard Sapper, designer of uh, the first uh, coffee machine produced uh, by Alessi in the new generation. This is something I need to tell you because it's quite typical. We are having a lot of fun. Take your time. It's a typical project. It reflects uh, the way in Italian designers uh, work. There are small workshops uh, which, uh, since uh, the 50s, uh, have started working with great uh, Italian and international designed talents. This was uh, the first water boiler produced. Uh, I have thought uh, that the supper the first cattle, I have thought uh, he could be the right uh, designer. He has accepted, uh, but he has asked, uh, he wanted to design uh, a special cattle, not just a nice looking one. He wanted to create a multisensorial cattle appealing to many senses and uh, not just, uh, not something to be touched and seen. And so I told him, why not? Uh, but his intention was to design a cattle uh, which, when water boils, uh, would uh, start uh, singing, producing a nice melody. So instead of triggering an alarm, as it was the case uh, with conventional cattle, uh, uh, music was supposed to be produced uh, uh, when water would reach a boiling temperature. And this music should reproduced his childhood in Stuttgart uh, in a small vi um, village. Uh, there was a steamboat uh, who would just pass uh, along the river producing this nice music, and he wanted to evoke uh, this music. Uh, to make it short, after about uh, five years, my technicians were still struggling uh, to, to, to find out a way to make uh, uh, the designer happy. So the project was uh, set aside, we had to focus on something else. But after about 18 months or so, one of the sisters of Sapper, who would live in Germany, happened to find in the Black Forest a small handcraftman uh, working for wooden furniture. 
Here we have these small tubes or pipes. They are being used to play. Uh, at the beginning of the concert, uh, they set uh, the tone. Uh, this is how you use uh, these uh, music tubes, uh, this diapason. Uh, after discussing with this uh, person from the Black Forest, uh, it's not easy for them to change their mind. Uh, he was convinced to produce uh, two special versions uh, with different musical notes, La and Si. So, uh, placed uh, here, when water boils, uh, these two whistles, uh, these two tubes, uh, would produce a nice melody. And now I have to show you something. This is it. Uh, this is uh, the small whistle. Here we have these, uh, with inside we have these uh, small tubes. È il designer più vicino a me e quello con il quale lancio e sviluppo i progetti più difficili. He's the designer who works uh, closest to me. Um, this is the alexophone. The alexophone is a saxophone that we developed uh, together with two uh, consultants who are experts in saxophones. This is the most expensive saxophone in the world. It's all handmade. It was made uh, on the Orta Lake, where there is a tradition, a 200 year long tradition with saxophone manufacturing. Alessandro Mendini has always been very proud of being considered a designer of something that doesn't sell. So, what he designs is too sophisticated for common people, which is absolutely true. With my cooperation, what is sure is that 15 years ago we created Anna G, which was our bestseller product for many years. And that's it. After a few years, this uh, lady felt lonely, Anna felt lonely, and so we decided to find uh, a, a, a fiancé. We found a Sando N. They have been living together ever since. Very often people buy two corkscrews, and the Sando M is also sold in different versions, uh, with limited editions, uh, as you can see here. This is from the 80s. I realized that I'm a bit late. Aldo Rossi. Aldo Rossi was one of the three people who most uh, represented the 1980s for Alessi. He was obsessed with coffee machines, as you can see. Aldo died in 1997. This is his last project for Alessi. It's a pan called Kubica, cubic shaped, literally. It represents the last tribute by Aldo Rossi to the functionist motto, form follows function. It's the ideal pan to cook a cubic tomatoes. The second great talent of the 80s is Michael Graves, who designed the kettle. He also invented Twitter. That's Twitter, the cap. Uh, the icon of Twitter is the cap. And then this image introduces Philip Stark, a uh, French designer. You can see a picture from the mid 80s when I miss him for the first time. This is a picture of today. It's a miracle. It shows that time goes by, but not similarly for everyone. Look when he was uh, younger, and look at uh, how he looks today, maybe with some 
aid. And then designer, uh, designing is a very good profession. It does you good. Stark is also funny when he invents the names for his objects. This is called Juicy Salif. And this is the produce, the design. This is a kitchen uh, strainer. It's called the Max Le Chinois. This is a famous kettle that never works, by the way. It's called Hot Berta. This is a cheese uh, box with a cheese grating device called Mr. Moumou. And uh, this is again a picture of Philip. Uh, the project of the Eco Vase uh, developed with Enzo Mari, another master designer from Italy. For years now, well, uh, it was the beginning of the 1980s, uh, 1990s, Enzo Mari insisted uh, that we had to test our social sensitivity, our environmental sensitivity. He said that Alessi had to manufacture his own uh, flower vase designed by Mari, done with recycled uh, plastic bottles. We worked on it for a while, but in the end, you know, uh, picking up all the used uh, plastic bottles, uh, wash them, cut them according to the master's instructions, uh, put them in the packaging, the production cost would lead to an exorbitant uh, uh, retail price, and people would not be willing to pay for that price. But in the end, I convinced Enzo Mari to change his position. You know, they, they also looked good. In this case, the real product, in my opinion, was the instruction book, which we manufactured and sold for years. I have one in my pocket, by the way. That's it. The graphics is very good. It was designed by Mari. In this booklet, there are handmade drawings made by Enzo Mari. You can, they, they explain how you can produce your own vase, starting from your own plastic bottles. There's also a beautiful label. Once you finish your self-production project, you can put it on your vase, and that testifies that it is an original uh, product by Alessi, designed by Mari.